Good morning, everybody. I'm Jill, behind the camera is Roger, and we are Which Way Now? Welcome everybody to a very wet bath. Uh, we arrived at the campsite last night, we'll do a little bit about the campsite later on. Um, and we are now in Bath, and this morning we took a walking tour, which was absolutely brilliant. I have to say, the guy's name was Adrian. There were three guides who were doing the walking tours, the big group of people. We had about ten people in our group. He said it was much smaller than the groups that he normally takes, but he was so interesting. The two and a half hours went by in a flash. We walked all over Bath, and this is where we started. We started outside Bath Abbey. And what I can remember from what he told us is that this is the third church that stood here. The very first church was a Saxon church, and then there was a Norman church, and this one was built in the 1400s, and it was built by a man who had a dream. I can't remember his name, but his dream was about angels climbing up ladders to going up and down from heaven. And actually, if you look at the side of the abbey doors, you can see the angels climbing up and coming down from heaven which is quite amazing. In fact, the man's name was Oliver King, I believe, who built this. And the reason I remember that is because if you look to the left, there's um, an olive tree coming up through a crown, and that was what he did for his thing. So basically, he was the one who had the inspiration to build it. There's a bishop's hat above it because he was a bishop, so he was Bishop Oliver King who built this. And this has been here for about 600 years, which is quite incredible. It's right next to the pump rooms in Bath, and we're going to do that at another time. Um, and that kind of sums up the Abbey. I'm sure if we go in, it would be quite incredible as well, but we haven't been in there yet. So we were listening to the tour, and he was telling us about the different levels that the city was built on. Now, the city was obviously founded by the Romans, and it was basically built to preserve the baths. There's, an, there's a spring that comes up here. It was a hot spring, which is incredibly rare, and that's to Aque Sulis Minerva, um, which is the god of Sul and god Minerva, and Sulis Minerva is who the baths are dedicated to. Um, but actually talking about the different levels, basically the Romans built their baths and then by about three or four hundred years later the baths had collapsed and they'd just got sand and they'd got mud all over them and nobody even knew they were there for about five, six, seven hundred years and it was really only in, Rome, in Victorian times that they actually uncovered the baths. Um, and we are now, basically, the level we're on is there's, there's things underneath here from the Roman times, so it's about five metres higher than it used to be um, and there's different levels which you can see as we go around the tour as well. So we've just been into Sally Lunds and bought Roger a bun because obviously it's food, therefore it's going to be Roger in the video later. And the lady said the best thing is to toast them. So we'll have to see if we can put it in our um, Ridge Monkey to toast it later on for Rog. Um, but Sally Lunds is one of the oldest houses in Bath. And I don't know if you can see at the top there, there's a little oval hole which has a stone owl in it. And apparently the houses were made like that with holes to encourage birds of prey to nest so that the birds of prey could get rid of the rats and the mice which abounded in the city. I told you before that that one was one of the widest streets in Bath, and this is actually the widest pavement in Bath. This is Duke Street, and apparently used to be used for promenading in the Georgian times. So when all the company were here, and the company was a group of people who used to come to Bath for three to six months of the year, and entertainments were laid on especially for them, and they would promenade up and down this street and around in their finery for everybody to see them so they could see and be seen. Now, in the Georgian times, they built a lot of assemblies, they built um, places for people to meet and people to have theatre, that kind of thing. And in the 1920s, they actually built this building behind us, which is called the Bath Pavilion. And we couldn't quite believe it when we heard that it was built for people to go skating. I assumed it was ice skating, but it was actually roller skating, which is quite incredible in the 1920s. So 120, 103 years ago, they built this just for roller skating, which apparently was a big fad in the 1920s. Who knew? And now or after that in the 60s and 70s they had a lot of big bands here so the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the Who, the Doors they've all played in this pavilion so this is Pulteney Bridge behind us and it was built or named after the man who actually paid for it to be built and his name was Pulteney and he had inherited all of the land to the right hand side as you look um, which was the Bathwick Estate which was a vast area of land a lot of it was marsh and the Bath City itself was the other side of the river and Pulteney had great ideas to extend the city it was Georgian times, he had lots of money and he wanted to extend the city onto this side of the river and so the first thing he needed to do was build a bridge. So he commissioned a Scottish architect called Adams, or Adam, to design it and build it for him, which he did and it has shops either side. Uh, the trouble was once it was completed there were two problems. One is it was already out of date and two is that it ran ten times over budget. 
Um, but the shops and things up there are lovely and it's a really pretty bridge. And the other thing was, was that he also wanted to build a road that would extend down that way, um, but it took 14 years after the bridge was completed before they could build any houses on that side, just because of the financial situation at the time. So this hotel behind me, I think it's called the Grand Hotel, and it was designed and built by a man called Davis. Now Davis had been instrumental in digging out some of the Roman baths and during that time he basically assumed that he was going to be building other projects in Bath but the Bath Corporation had other ideas and they didn't actually commission Davis to do anything other than just dig out the Roman baths and he was really fed up with that. But then a few years later the Corporation had a change of mind and they decided that they would commission Davis to actually build this hotel. And apparently this was his last laugh because a lot of people think it's very ugly um, and if you look at the roof line, in, in theory it's meant to be designed so that anybody could stay there, whether it was a king or a, somebody in a little cottage. Um, and it's known locally as the Revenge Hotel because Davis thought it was incredibly ugly and he did that deliberately to just get his own back on the corporation because he bore them a grudge until the day he died. Bath has been used for lots and lots of different films, um, but certainly one thing I remember it for is Les Mis. I didn't know it was actually here. And this is where Russell Crowe at the end, when he commits suicide, jumps into the river just there where the weir is and actually thinking about it I do remember that and I remember thinking oh that looks a bit like Bath but I didn't actually know that it was filmed here. This is Bath Rugby Club right by Pulteney Bridge right on the river. Um, this was started in 1865 and it's a very famous rugby club still going. It was started by Bath Cricket Club which is actually just the other side of the bridge that we came across the river on um, for something for the gentleman to do in the winter was how it was started and it's gone pretty much from strength to strength since then. Pulteney Bridge is behind Roger now, um, but this is the road that took 14 years to build. So basically, the bridge stopped about where we are, and then there was nothing. Um, and this, these row of houses took 14 years once the bridge was completed to actually finish. And at the end of the road, for anybody who's a Bridgerton fan, that, used to, that featured in the Bridgerton series. Apparently it was Lady Somebody's House. But This is the famous bridge in Bath. As Jill says, it's got shops either side, and is only one of four bridges in the world with shops either side but building shops either side of the bridge was out of date as soon as it was built. This is Trim Street and actually this is quite interesting the couple of shops behind me here were used in the TV series Bridgerton but also at the end that house that's very dark that was exactly what the colour of the houses was in the 1800s they've been so polluted by the smoke from the chimneys and this was quite an industrial area as well so all of the houses were absolutely black until they were started to be cleaned in the early 1900s. This is Queen Square and this was built on, uh, this, the whole of the buildings around the edge were designed by John Wood who designed an awful lot of Bath and he used to live on that side of the square and apparently there's a plaque on that side that says John Wood used to live here. He didn't used to live over there, he used to live over there and he would look at that and when they were designing this square they didn't have any trees in it, they just had very low hedges. It was a private garden for the people of the square and they had low hedges so that people could look out on John Wood's work which was actually the fantastic design. And what he did was he designed each side to look like one house, even though it was lots of smaller houses, uh, which I think is quite clever. So behind me, you'll see there's eight or nine different houses along the side there, and it was designed to look like one particular house, um, which is fantastic. And it's now, basically, this, this gardens, the private gardens were given to the city of Bath in 1947 to remember all the people who were killed in air raids during the Second World War. And it's now where the centre of Bath have their big uh, Remembrance Sunday Parade as well. We are now in the Circus. This is a beautifully, completely circular row of houses, three rows of houses actually, um, and it was designed by John Wood the Elder and finished by John Wood the Younger um, in the 1700s. And it's quite interesting because actually the three roads are all exactly the same distance apart and the three roads are all exactly the same length as well. And whether the three are to do with the spiritual or whether they're to do with Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I don't know. Um, but it was quite interesting that John Wood was in very into all of that kind of stuff. The other interesting thing is this is exactly the same size as the stones on Stonehenge. So he designed it specifically to be exactly the same size around the circumference as the stones on Stonehenge. And if you look at the building behind me, there's three layers of columns you could see. And the bottom layer are Doric columns, the second layer are Ionic, and the top one are Corinthian columns. And then there's another layer at the top there as well, which aren't columns, but there's another um, layer of living accommodation, which would have been for the servants or maybe for the children. So five layers these houses have, and either one or two cellars included in that as well.
This is one of the most famous streets in Bath, if not the most famous, and this is the Royal Crescent. Um, built in about 1767, took about eight or nine years to build, and it's absolutely stunning. I mean, I dread to think how much a property here must cost. What we do know is that one on the circus that sold in 2017 sold for more than £10 million, so I don't know how much one of these would cost. I suspect most of them are now flats. Um, but it is quite incredible. Again, designed by John Wood as part of his master plan. And originally where we're standing would have been sheep grazing because they wanted to look out over the countryside. You could see the ha-ha there. That would have been their private gardens and this would have been wide open countryside and they've been able to view the city of Bath below them. The house behind me is where one, the legendary Bo Nash died. Now, Bo Nash um, was born a very poor man but through luck and through consequence, he ended up circulating with very high society. And he came to Bath in the early 1700s, just when Bath was kind of at its peak, really. Um, and Bo Nash started to organise all of the local company into their dances and their socialising and their marriages. And what he wasn't involved in wasn't worth being involved with, basically. He was an incredibly influential, very, very rich man, and he'd earned his money through gambling. And when he died, he'd got a string of girlfriends and oh well, in fact, before he died, he had a string of girlfriends. And sadly, when he fell out of favour, it was because he'd lost a lot of money through gambling and Bath was also on the decline. And as he sort of fell out of favour, the girlfriends left him, apart from one who was called Juliana Popjoy. And she lived in this house here. And this is therefore where Bo Nash actually died. You can't come to Bath without having a Bath bun. Specifically, a Sally Lund's Bath bun. Now... Once again, no idea what this is like. Having said you can't come to Bath, been to Bath many times, never had one. But it is enormous. <laughs> God, dear. So, wow. <laughs> that is a Sally Lund's Bath bun. Now, sweet or savoury, it does say. Uh, buns can be frozen, do not store in fridge. Sweet, toast your bun and then serve with butter. Um, savoury toast and butter, then add melted cheese. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try toasting it, actually, in our um, Ridge Monkey and see what it looks like. And I will report back shortly. Okay. So we can actually only do half of the bath bun in the Ridge Monkey at a time. But um, I've done the bottom half, as I always would do. And here goes. It's okay. <laughs> I was I was expecting sweet. I like sweet. Um, it's not really sweet. Um, yeah, not sure it's got any particular um, attributes. I mean, it's perfectly okay, but um, yeah, I wouldn't rave about it, shall we say. And no glowing endorsement. No glowing endorsement, indeed. <laughs> 